Hello, hello, my beautiful people, my beautiful viewers. Welcome to Movie Manual. This is Agi and it is your show, Movie Manual. Before we do anything, I would like to thank God for the gift of life. I would like to thank God for keeping us, Vanangi. People are out there, Muli Lechigena Masse Masaka, Muli Akatibiatu Sewanabweru. I heard on the news, guys, let's keep praying for our families, for our friends, for our country, for our nation. This is not very good. But we thank God that He's kept us until now and He's going to keep us because He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. I'm so excited, guys. COVID is still out there. To be careful, let's keep the SOPs to observing your SOPs to Nabengalo both in and out, in between the fingers with clean running water and soap. Guys, do not joke about this. Sometimes you'll be walking in town and people like they're wearing masks. Let's wear masks the right way to Nabe to keeping a physical distance to to. If we don't have to come into town, in two crowded places, just for the sake of your family and your life and other people that come in, in, like in your circle. But on a more lighter note, I am so excited today. I have a, sis, a long lost sister of mine. When I was this is my sister that was long lost. I am with my sister, Sisi Nalumansi Lala Sisi. She, <laughs> she's a writer, she's a director, she's a producer, she's a, an, an um, IT. Yes. IT person, she is a Christ ambassador. Without this, it can be a little bit hard. But I'm so excited. And Timuda Vanganjoka, it's the excitement over I am starstruck. But I'm glad, I'm happy that she could, in her busy schedule, I'm so happy to introduce to you Sisi. Hello. With the way you've introduced me, I eh? I don't know. <laughs> it's too much. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. We are happy to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I'm so so humbled to be here and to meet you. You are sight for sore eyes. I oh. I, I, feel, I feel home already being here with you. So thank you for having. Thank you me. for allowing to come, Kumanga. I know how busy you are. Really, Wangamba. Agi, this whole week is, I'm like, <laughs> people can be this busy. <laughs> As in, no yes, thank God, the yeah. whole week is mm. all packed. Or a month. But we thank God for the opportunity. I know we do. Yes, so yeah. it's good to have you, like, thank you. Thank, thank you for thank you. coming. Thank you. Thank you for allowing to be here. Because you're my sister. Now, I want to have a to love who is sissy, who is Nalumans, what does she do? Who is she? So, kindly look into that lens and, and tell these people who you are, what you do, and of all the single, of all the married. You know, you are Gambi. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Sissy Nalmansi. Praise God to the believers and uh, God bless you. Uh, and to those that don't believe, I still love you the same. Yes. Uh, so I'm Nalma Sisi. I am a writer, I'm a producer, I'm a director. I've done almost everything on set. There are times when times were hard uh, with the editors that I had to do the work myself and edit and production design. So I, I think it's good that I've been blessed with the opportunity to be an all-round filmmaker, though I specialize much in writing and directing in production yeah nice and how long have you been in the industry cc not long actually uh, as a writer maybe five years but as a but as a director i think around two to three years only. so all all in total you've been in the industry how long like six please years. don't say yeah <laughs> <laughs> like six years it's not um it's not been long I know that's why I'm like, don't yes. say as in, yeah. it's, 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 it's thank God, <laughs> yeah, really. Yes, it, it is. And I've, I've, in, the, in the short time, I am so grateful for the things that I've been able to accomplish and list out. And I see that, oh, I did this too, this too. So it's, it's great that in that amount, mm. I've been able to accomplish whatever. So accomplished. you mentioned that uh, you, you, you do so many things on set. For yes. example, you, you, you direct, you mm -hmm. produce it, but you specialized in two writing yes. mostly. Yes. So did you go to film school? Like, did you self-teach? Like, did you self-teach? Did you like go to, how did you become a writer? Um, I, 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 when I was at campus in, uh, 
from 2012 to 20s, I graduated in 2017, I had a dead year. Mm. Um, I remember as everybody else was busy coding because I was studying IT, mm. I used to run off to the labs and I, I was writing film. And funny thing, as I was writing it in a Word document because I didn't know there were professional script writing softwares. Okay. So that I think that is where my passion was. Growing up, I used to run off to go to the bandas. I, 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 I saw that, but I didn't want to mention <laughs> that, but I was like, hey. Yeah, so maybe that is as far as my love, I mean, where it ran, mm. it, it started from. So in, in the process, I wanted to know how do I do this? How can I tell a story through writing? How can I speak, make somebody speak? So before the professionalism came in, because mm. when MultiChoice picked me up and they trained me, uh, that is when it became professional, but I was a non-conventional non writer before that. Yeah. yeah, now that you mentioned the MultiChoice, mm. because in 2018, you won a year fully paid film training scholarship with MultiChoice Talent Factory. Yes. Fact Factory. Yes. Uh, so kindly tell us exactly what is this about and how did you, how did this whole scholarship thing come about? Okay, so uh, MultiChoice, and they're, they're now doing it for the third, uh, for the third year, year of academics. Mm. Uh, so basically what they do is they look for very passionate uh, young filmmakers okay. who want to get a breakthrough mm. in filmmaking, mm. but mm. they don't have a platform or they don't have the expertise and the skills to do it. So they invest in you a fully uh, funded one year of training, wow. allowances, air tickets, they invite you, or they, they introduce you to filmmaking gurus. Uh, through them, we go to meet people that work with Tyler Perry, that work with... Uh, you met him in person? He's called Elvin Ross, so people that work closely with him and if with Dolby Sound, very, very many people from different backgrounds and they interact with you, they tell you how they do it and then you get to learn from them. So is it like a competition sort of like? No, it is how do How do they like pick on people, the different people? Oh, so yeah, that is a competition in a way. So basically, mm. uh, for my year, the year that I was taken in, mm. um, the people that applied were across Africa, there were around 3,100, and they were looking for only 60. 3,100? Yes. They and they're only looking for 60? 60 across Africa. Wow. So it's got to take God and some special... Thank you for, thank you for <laughs> making that <laughs> yes. like, known. Because yes. sometimes one would think, ah, ah, mm. I have mm. connections. Mm. Mm. Recently, I was actually given an opportunity to be one of the, uh, on the panel of inter interviewing the new intake. Mm. And what I saw is many of them are passionate. Many of them have whatever it takes. So what makes you special is a special God, yeah? There, there's got to be that that is above you mm, to spot mm. you out and to label you and to mark you so that you are, you are taken in. So I, I believe that that is what actually worked for me. Wow. Mm. So what do you like most about script writing and what don't you like mm. a lot mm. about script writing? Um, I, I've learned over time that um, I, I express myself better with, on the keyboard I could write and rewrite, you get? So I have an opportunity. It is not the same with when you speak a word out, you can't take it back. But I have a second chance when I'm a writer, oh, you get? Because yeah. I'd be like, no, that doesn't sound right. Or uh, I'm going to offend someone by this, so let me delete it yeah, and you rewrite it. Back. Rewrite yeah, it. so it's a better way for me to express myself. What I don't like about it is when I have written something and I am very sure it's perfect, and then the actor doesn't, Deliver. Deliver. They improvise. I, I, I know improvising is good, but when I put a full stop somewhere, <laughs> I want you to respect the full stop. It took me nights and nights of me wanting to know, I mean, deciding to put the full stop there. So, oh, a coma. Yes, know. yes. If what? I say, hmm, yes. say the hmm, it's... Oh, my <laughs> God. God. Yes. I, I'm a bit rigid in that way, but I, um, I, I, also when the director doesn't do a good job to your script, you feel betrayed because... Initially, it's your vision. All of them build up on your vision. It's what you saw at first that they're going to pick up. So when they don't respect it and they don't deliver it to its best ability, then you somehow hate that you've had to be the one to write that. Wow. Because now you mentioned about improvisation. Yes. I, I worked with some director mm -hmm. 
who did not who the actually does not want i don't know if he still does it but the mm. time when i worked with him mm. he would say banange mm. i know what i wrote yes. and if you have to improvise mm. come to me let's go through these lines yes. let me see you improvise mm. if it works for yes. me yes. otherwise don't just mm. shock me don't surprise me on set but again mm. there's someone who tells you mm. There's another one that does not actually write everything. Mm. So he's going to give you a few lines mm. and then he expects you to understand, feel the story and mm. then improvise, make it your own. Okay, now the problem with improvisation, mostly for that scenario that you've brought to our attention, mm. is how do you keep up with the many takes? Because if you shoot it the first time and she said, I went yeah. to school, and then the second take they are saying, I had to go to school, and the third time, you get the continuity yes, yes. and the yes, challenges yes. that you'll have in post-production. Now that is why I want the actors to stick to the story and oh. the, the dialogue. Because you're going to take like five takes until you get out there. Unless the actor is that good. But if they're not that good, you're going to do many takes. Now if the person doesn't know, they are constructing as they go, mm, they are mm. bound to mess up. And that means a lot of production time will be wasted. I, am, I go with the first person who said, do you stick to... To that the script. Respect the writer, respect their craft, and do it's, what? It's not that I don't respect, but like you said, because mm. sometimes mm. you might write, mm. and then and then I'm supposed to play this flamboyant, you know, and I feel like like mm. there's some language that you do yes. not, yes, yes, yes that, yes, that yes, feel yes. like, mm. you feel like, mm. uh, maybe there's this word I should say here, or mm. I should actually, mm. you know, bring out this mm. line like this, yes. but then that's not how you wrote it. Yes. So in that case, what happens? So you have table reads, mm -hmm. with the, and this is what I do when I'm studying my production with, mm -hmm. the, with the actors. We sit and they read out the words from the script, all of them, mm. so that they start to embody the character. And then in that moment, you're like, how about this comes out, you know, no, that way? No, I'm not feeling that way that, yes. at that point. We I agree, we agree. And many times, if you don't allow the actor to also express themselves through the way they feel they, they'll bring out their character better, mm, mm. then you're killing their craft. You yes, give them you room. Yeah, so because, because here we have table reads and, mm. and then we are reading and mm. then we, but then when I go back mm. and I have really, really like, mm. really read and digested and processed mm. and mm. lived this character, mm. I come back with a different feel altogether. As long as it's not on set. Because <laughs> once we are on set, we go with what is on the script. In between that gestation period mm. you are free to consult with your director and ask them if if you can change the dialogue a bit but you don't wait until set and i'm not i mean no, the I, know, I, know, I, know, I know i understand yeah, I you, know. You, you don't wait for that day and because you're also going to confuse the continuity director who is supposed to mark you for every word that you speak yes yeah so okay so in times where you have written your script and you don't feel like the director is Mm. is bringing it out the way you'd want it because in most cases you're not on set yes as a writer as a writer yes, yeah. so what do you do you live with it <laughs> you I live with I it know. no at the moment you hand in your script mm. to be produced mm. your your rights as a writer stop mm. there you don't intervene in the process moving forward nobody will give you so to avoid a heartbreak don't even go to set <laughs> honestly just stay home and work on another project okay so d are you sometimes approached to just write i come i come to you and i'm like okay okay i i i want to write about hmm. okay domestic violence for example Absolutely. do i give you the ins the depth of the story or do you sit down after i've told you hmm. domestic violence hmm. you go ahead and just start writing do i what do i do so uh, uh, apparently recently somebody reached out to me, mm. he's a bigger person, mm -hmm. and he was like, Sisi, I need you to write a story for me, but he gave me the title for the film, yes. just the title. And then he was like, me, that's all I know, but I feel it that we mm. should make a story about that. So in that case, because I like to challenge myself, mm. not to be spoon fed, mm. I, I had to go back and do the research and then because it's a process where you go back and forth with the producer or the person who has commissioned you to write, then you decide where you want the story to go. But some people come to you and they already know the story and they just want you to add flesh to it. Mm, and others mm. come to you and they just have uh, an idea, like child mm. abuse, domestic yeah. violence, mm, and then mm. you decide to tell, to define the characters, define the world of the story, you define everything from scratch.
Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wrote and directed Keller movie. Yes. What is what is Keller about, and what inspired you to write this movie? Uh, Keller is a story of a young girl mm -hmm. who, in a world where it's an abomination for women to heal diseases, she goes against all odds and heals the leader of a local village. Why? Heal as, as in she had special powers? No. She didn't have special powers. She just had the skill sets to do it. Okay. Whereas, uh, now let me just give you a story that mm. I had, because this is storytelling. Yes, in a it way. is. It is. <laughs> so there is a person in town, I was told, mm. who goes, um, you, you remember those, or you weren't there, but those times back, back in the day when a man used to put, a, to tie a rope or a chai around the meat piece. Mm -hmm. so, I heard about those. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this guy, they, they go with the saucepan to work in town. They okay. carry it over there and then he selects the pieces that he wants. No! Yes, I'm being honest. And then they pack it and then they take it back home. That is when now the family at home shares whatever is left in the, in the, in the dish. Wow. Yeah, but you don't touch it until he has selected all the pieces of oh, beef wait. that he wants. Yes. Okay, I, I am thinking yeah. the meat already, ha already has that kind rope in there. So <laughs> why don't they no, 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 no. That is another case. Eh. But for him specifically, eh. when they when they cook it, eh. they have to first take it to him. All of it, the way it is. The, the whole suspense. Yes. The, you know those older time boxes? Yes, yes. They wrap and eh. tie the, the, uh -huh. the chimuli around uh -huh. and then he picks the pieces and then they take back home. So when I had that story, I was like, really, we are moving forward, but in a way backwards, you know? So if such a thing still exists in this time, doesn't this person ever wonder what these people who carry the box every day to work feel, you know? It's a distrust in a way. So such stories of how a man feels like they can overshadow the process, the family running process, you know? And how I compared it with other things that have happened to the women in the past where they can't eat chicken, all the I good know, things. I know, those things. all the <laughs> things they are left. Men, milk, eh. no milk, no eggs, no chicken, no beef, no nothing. I know, you get, so. men, were, men of those days were <laughs> mean. Eh? Yeah, so I felt like um, even in these, in these times, I'm a, I'm a female, I'm petite. So, so for some reason, some men think I can't handle it. So they feel the need to overshadow me when it's a big, uh, a, a big representation. They are like, you need to go with a guy so yes. that you convince that man more. When you go with a guy, he'll listen to you more. You get so that kind of distrust and feeling like they, we don't get this yet we do made me want to tell Keller's story. You're living in a world where men overimpose themselves mm. on, on your life, on your skill set, on the things that you can do, mm. and they define you because of their insecurities, you know? So Keller is that girl. She is living in a world, and men think it's a manly thing to heal because it is a yeah. thing you get. Yes, I do. So she's like, nah, -uh. I, I've got to do this. I've got to go out there, and I've got to heal this person even though it might cost me my life or my place in society. And it was that bad? They yes. could actually kill her? Yeah, they would ban you from the village, yeah. Like these things we watch in Nigerian movies, like you're banished, all those yes, things, and yeah. you're not supposed to come yes, into this community yes. ever again. The, because even the, bani the banishing works nowadays, except it's a bit more more enveloped, but I've had people being chased from the villages. In many cases, it's because they, they are considered witches. Mm. Yeah, but still that thing works. So regardless of the, the, the era of the story, still, you know, the banishing works. So, okay. so yeah. how long did it take you to write Keller? Writing it two days, uh, but two? two days. Two what? Two days. How long is it? It's, um, 13 minutes and 43 seconds. It's a short story. Yes, it is. Okay. But, uh, but uh, mind mapping it and plotting it took a whole longer than that. Yeah, because 90% of writing is in the head. So by the time you get to real typing, mm. of course, you know this person is going to say like that because you already saw it play out in your head. Mm, mm. So yeah, and also because I was beating a deadline. <laughs> I know. And mm. this girl, the, this mm. girl that is on the poster. Delish. Yes, her name is Delish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, where is this story coming from? Is it like uh, an, an central kind of story? Is it like coming from the east, the west, the north? Mm, apparently, I didn't put, um, I didn't want it to belong to certain yeah. people. Okay. I wanted it to cut across. 
So this person doesn't belong anywhere except in that world. Mm. So you'll find that people from different backgrounds will associate with it because it, it has a theme, a topic that cuts across, but it doesn't confine you to a specific location and that is where it is coming mm. from. Okay. Mm. So as an active actor, uh, an active actor, writer, producer, and all that, but yes. as an active writer, yes. what has been your biggest disappointment in the industry? Ah, my biggest is writers are undermined, demeaned, looked down upon, or not considered as as creative in the in the creative ladder or hierarchy as mm. they should be. Mm. Okay, most of the credit goes to other people, except writers, and yet they are the geniuses here. I mean, like. I am the one who wrote this that you yeah. so much praise. Mm. And I'm not trying to look down at the actors, but you find a story and you you bring it to life. And for some reason, you get to be a celebrity. Ah. And, the, <laughs> and the writer stays in the background, you know. Many of them are dying with sunglasses and all that, you know, and nobody knows. They, they look like... Yes, you like know, nuts. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're like, ah. Yeah. So I feel like... Uh, one of the biggest sh uh, challenges is they, they've not very well been put to a limelight to, to be given the credit they do. Mm. Or the other thing is somebody wakes up in the morning and says, write about this. And they feel like you're just going to go, ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm done. Because writing they is don't a, know how much the takes. process. The they process. don't know the process. The creative process is people don't understand the creative process when it comes to writing. So they tend to think it's an easy job yet it's absolutely not. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, you're speaking like as, an, as, a, as a writer mm -hmm. and you're also saying that they've been uh, like not considered mm -hmm. well because mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. saw ABCD. I think at the end of the day, on, on, on a whole project, like all put together, mm -hmm. everyone plays a big role absolutely. in their own absolutely. corners. Yes. But I can understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But also we've had where people have written stories and they don't really tell stories that they intend to write either it's because then they they are i don't know i don't know how it even phrased it but mm. the authenticity yes. of these stories has has died out especially if we're here you're ugandan you're writing something about someone from bunyoro for example and and, and then and then and then this amoti wakeko ever mm. comes out like some g from downtown New York or the, I don't know those places. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, is it is it is it you the story the writer? Is it the director? Is it the, what what happens along there because it, it is dying? Okay, no, I, I think that is all attributed to lack of preparedness on the side of the writer. Because you have we work with character bibles. Mm. You have to define your character too well. Not all of not all of you or us yes. do have this character by both <laughs> but as a writer it's a must before you go down to start typing to start writing dialogue you must have defined your characters too well in that bible so that you know who they are really well to the core you have to know how they turn how they breathe how they move what they eat how they dress who they are, what they want, what is their goal, what, how are they going to get their goal. Many of the challenges that I've actually found in Ugandan storytelling is mm. we don't know what stories we are telling. And it goes back to what you said, we are copying the West and other parts of the world that mm. are telling these stories. We need to learn to tell. Our, I, I find myself wanting to tell more of character-based stories because people want to follow a journey of a character. Yes. What is, is going to happen to her? How did she find herself in this mess? How is she going to get herself out of this mess, you know? So that is how you string them along in this journey, whereas they have other things to do, like watch FIFA, you know? Mm, how do you mm. keep them focused on watching your story? How do you bring them to your side? Is by defining your character so well. And I feel like we don't do that, yeah? We don't do a lot of research. So we need to invest more in doing research and defining our character. <laughs> We are going to come back to that same point because I was, I was listening to Taraji P. Henson talking yes. about Koki, her, her role, her mm -hmm. character role in mm -hmm. Empire. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, she was like, can you imagine this woman? Mm -hmm. But we'll be right back. We're going to talk about more about especially building the, the story and making it, owning it as a writer, but also me as, a, as, a, as the talent, as the actor. Mm -hmm. how, can, how best can we do that? We'll be right back. We're going for a short break and we're going to come back to that same point. We are still with Sissy. Don't go anywhere. And it's the movie money on Restive. We'll be right back. 
if they find out who you are. You've been a world of trouble, Kema. I don't know what else to do. He's dying. Your leader will leave if we perform the ritual before sundown. If he's dying today, let's give him a good send off. Bunch! What are you doing here? You have to let me do this for her. Well, welcome back from that short break. I'm still here with Sissy and it is your girl Aggie and it's a movie money on Rest TV. We are talking film. Now we are talking about script writing. We are talking about the authenticity of stories, our Ugandan stories. So like I was saying, mm -hmm. um, we, we are lacking. It takes the writer and I, the mm -hmm. actor, mm -hmm. To make this story believable and relatable mm -hmm. to the someone who's going to be watching it doesn't matter when mm -hmm. years after or when mm -hmm. but how can we make this beautiful and interesting for our audiences uh, uh, this is going to be collective energy yes we need production labs multi-choice tries to organize uh, master classes mm. um, and other platforms also do the same we need more script writing classes we need to teach our writers that whereas you're passionate about telling this story, mm. you need to be conventional about it. Mm. You need to know the trick. How do I write? What, what, what are the acts, you know, the character act that I'm mm. following? Mm. The, the three acts, I use three acts, but there are five acts. Mm. The, the, the acts of writing, you know, breaking the story into bits so that you take your audience on a curb, you know, until you, you give them a climax. So. They need to know these things. Many of them don't know because they are in the industry because of passion. So it's upon us and the government and personal energies, mm, you know, mm. to go out there to the University of YouTube or Google <laughs> and then you research and you, you subscribe to classes. I believe everything is out there. True we, that. We just, we just got to get out of our lazy comfort zones and mm. try to better because nobody the productions from out of the country will not come to hire you when you're half baked like that they want to work with somebody professional yeah mm -hmm. speaking of professional what does it take for one to become a professional writer hmm now this it doesn't take it what it takes is writing a, a, a script and finishing it i will not even say pro, professionalism to me comes in the way you deliver and you you define your story that's where the professionalism comes i believe everyone oh, even okay, as in i think in that case is when when i approach you mm -hmm. we agree on the terms yes we agree on uh, the period mm -hmm. and then you deliver right yes that's the professionalism that comes yes. with writing and on time and on time yeah because cre creativity is weird like that i would i would say go to class and study these things yes. but i know many people would go and study and still come out and don't tell you know stories that would, would resonate with the audience mm. so it's about the passion to tell the story knowing the rules of telling that story like how do you format your story to to be for people to understand like the software that you use so that when they put it into a scheduling program it will work but also because it's a it, it is following a, a certain sort of procedure that the other departments will understand and also bring their creativity on board to hey. tell the same story Sissi. Mm. Hmm. Sissi, it's as if you don't know it's as if you're not from here I'm from here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we have so many issues, but we are going to touch one by one. I know, you get. The thing is, in the past, we were fighting with people not being paid on set. I used to work with somebody, and I wasn't paid a thing, even a penny, you know. With food, they would give me food, and then mm. they would be like, they would send me off to, to home, you know. But we are getting there. We are, we are seeing so many commissions coming in. DSTV is commissioning so many projects here on ground. They are, they've got to find us ready. We're sending so much, we are winning so many awards. I've seen so many films do magic here, mm. out in the world, yeah? Mm, mm. So it's a process. Whereas in the past we used not to earn anything, now we earn something. So we gotta take one brick at a time to build this. So when you write the script, do you leave room for change? Like how much will the script change 
during shooting, during the filming period, as in, I don't know, do you like, when you're writing, you're like, okay, mm. there's room for change. I've, I've got to be confident that I've done my job, mm. but I have to also understand that when I hand it in, the department that I've handed it in mm. is, it has the right to totally overhaul almost everything. So that's why the, the director's vision is important because he changes dialogue. He comes up with what we call the director's script mm. afterwards. Mm. So and after you've given them what you've written, yes. the director comes up with his own. Yes, I wrote a film recently called Veil of Tears. It's produced by Claire Nampala. It's, uh, I think it's in post-production. But when I wrote it and I met the director, we were working on something else and mm. said, yeah, I don't get mad. I changed some of the things. I removed some of these scenes. Yay. So he, he has the authority and the right to remove scenes or to add in more. Because at the end of the day, I've given him a skeleton. Now it's upon him to patch it with the flesh that he will, you know. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so have you had cases whereby you've written a script, it is all done and complete, mm. and, then, and then the director or the producers, they come back to you and they're like, you know yes. what? Yeah? Yes. Rewrites all the way. Oh. A lot of them. Even when you pitch to bigger platforms, Netflix, mm. uh, what, what, you can work on drafts, up to 15 drafts after they've taken on your project, after they like your script, they can change it. Because at, at the end of the day, this is business to them. So they yes. have to define it according to their audiences. That's how you find some elements that you didn't write ending up in your story. Because like now, you wrote about a character who is in a village, but we want to give him this weird aura, this you get. So they have the executive producers have ideas. So they come up with their ideas, like mm, let's do mm. this. Like, But you can't say no because it's business at the end of the day. You're telling a story, but who will see that story if you don't accommodate? Because writers can be dreamy, you know? I know. <laughs> they, they can write about, you know, the stars and all these aliens and mm, whatnot. Mm, mm. And yet the audience won't resonate with the kind yeah. of... Yeah, so when the, the story is there and there are elements that can be cleaned and cut off, then you've got to have, you know, the patience to let them do their job too. Okay, so uh, if you are to advise someone, like, would you advise them to go to school? Mm. Like, because we are going to go back to that point where you had to run away from home or from school and, <laughs> go, to, <laughs> and go to be bandas. <laughs> but before then, mm. as in, if you are to advise someone who is yes. very passionate out there, yes. would you advise them to go to film school or would you advise them to go to film sets? Film school, first. Why? They need to know the rules. It is easy. Learn the rules, mm. then go and break them. That is how it works. Okay. Learn how to write, then def define your own way of, of writing, writing how you're but going to keeping write. what you learned in mind. Then after learning that, go to those sets and apply what you learned because you need the experience. Now, when you garner all that, you can tell a better story. Okay, so I am, I'm, I am I'm this young girl, young boy out mm. there. I'm mm. very passionate about filmmaking, mm. but I want to like really, really focus mm. mostly on writing. How would you advise me? Mm, you've not written before. No, I've not written, before. but I feel like, mm. I, I feel, you know, like, I, mm. I feel it, I can feel mm. it deep inside that I can write, but I have no idea what to do, when and mm. how. Mm -hmm. How would you advise me? So you don't maybe if you don't have the money to subscribe to a school mm. or the platform to learn mm. from the settings, go to Google, type in how to write okay. a story. Mm. You get yeah. then start with the basics. You find guidelines. Mm -hmm. Read as many scripts as you can. The best writers are the best readers. You read every script. Read other people's scripts because you get to learn how they they attack their own characters in the way they write. Mm, so read mm. as much, go to YouTube, read about how to define characters and character descriptions, the stories that really took the world, swept them off their feet, mm. what was so special about them, then get to know that. Write, 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 delete, write, delete, write, delete, yeah? Until you're, you're sure that I've written something amazing, then ask the counsel of someone who has done it. I've, mm. I've had so many people reach out to me, and they're like, I wrote a script, kindly read through yeah, and give until, me feedback yeah, yeah. so that I know where I'm standing. Reach out, don't be afraid to reach out. Some of them, sometimes they bother me, yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I'm handling so much, but yeah. I like that they do, 
at least it shows their passion, you know. So I find myself be, be like, okay, let me just read and give that person feedback because they're all over my neck, mm. you know, they're breathing onto me. So reach out, reach out, send your scripts in, send them to as many uh, competitions as there are out there, screenwriting competitions, mm. and then see. You never know who might read your script as a joke. Go to syndicate dentist. No, 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 Submit it here, not sharing it with a friend, and that's how you get your breakthrough. Okay, so before we went for a break, I, mm. I said we were going to talk about uh, that speech. I, I listened to Taraji's speech yes. when she was uh, receiving her award, and she was like, who knew? Mm. Who knew that uh, a, a, a drug addict, like convicted drug addict or drug dealer, would mm. come back and tell a story and would like represent so many people out there and mm. at the end of the day we even win an award mm. so i have you written a story mm. have you have you written a script and then someone has taken it on mm. as an actor and you feel so proud that mm. they have actually brought it to life as in you feel so fulfilled that this person has killed it as in she you know sometimes most uh, you're even lucky that you can write act mm. and but some of these people can actually write but they have no idea mm how to act but mm. then they have things running in their minds and and they feel like they would want mm. to to like get part of their whatever is running in them and put it in this other actor so that they can actually mm. get this role and kill it so have you had experiences where you feel i wrote killer and actually mm. this girl mm. got exactly what i had in mind yes yes uh Kella was a bit uh, hectic in in shooting because we are shooting in lockdown and mm. uh, we had so many issues that I can imagine. Yeah, we just championed out of these issues. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a failed project. But uh, um, the actors did an amazing job. You know, now you see the challenge is with a short film, you have very little time to tell a story, and you have to have make sure everyone Every, understands. Yes, absolutely. And I feel like I commend them for for a, a job well done. I feel confident that their acting is off the pages. But also, there is another film that we did, uh, Promises, that won an award in, at MVCA. Uh, that one also did amazing. The actors made you follow the journey of the of the character and it was breathtaking if you know when you're not acting you think acting is easy it is thank you <laughs> thank <laughs> you and it means a lot coming from a writer <laughs> acting is not it's easy. not easy yeah and i hate it when um directors tend to direct actors we know you know result oriented act directing like now i want you to cry you know <laughs> yes yeah so you don't know why you're crying but you're like mm -hmm, the, the director asked for it yes. so that's when you have emotional jump cuts and the audience is cut off but when you write and you know you've you've done a great job and an actor does um, an amazing job at showing what you know that that you wrote yes. then you feel satisfied with i feel like the best way that we can know is when you get nominated that film gets nominated yeah. and you get some awards and Sulo did well. Um, yeah, and even if even if you as a writer does do, you don't receive anything, but you yes. feel like your story yes. was uh, yes. well yes. represented and yeah. And we also have to understand that there is a difference between award-winning films and audience-loved films. Uh -huh. Award-winning films mostly focus on the technicalities of the story. Oh, so Whereas, not necessarily the best, best, best. No, no. They could focus on those shorts that looked amazing and they give you an award oh, for now, it. This is very new to me. Mm. Thank God you have even brought it up. Me, I thought in my own understanding mm. that when a movie won, wins an award, mm. it is like the best in, in terms of story, you know, all those technicalities that you talked about, everything no. about it is perfect. No, 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 no. no. The, I, I usually like to tell stories that the audience resonates with mm. because I believe they are mo much more powerful than a, a, I, I was in with the uh, Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards in Nigeria. Mm. I was part of, I sat in with the judges. Hey, I got mama, lucky. Take me with you next time. <laughs> <laughs> if I get a chance, yes. I know. <laughs> so I saw the process they go through judging these films. It's very, very um, professional how they do it. But I saw films that spoke to me but didn't win you know mm, they mm. made me laugh they were quirky and fun and they didn't make through because they're like but the shots are typical you get that the shots don't move us so they read film festivals read shots they read the story they read the actors actors acting 
But whereas when you go down to the level, the films that speak to people are these weird, weird films. As long as the audience follows the story, they don't care about the, the, the aerial shot. Mm. They don't Sometimes care. they don't even care about the lighting. <laughs> they do not. They just want to see how does this person overcome? How do they follow through their journey? Yeah, so telling a story that speaks to the audience, mm. to me, is, is much bet better storytelling than, than for the film, the for the film festival. Yes, okay. even though this is also satisfying, it comes with money and goodies mm. and more co-productions co and deals. Mm. But after that, w you want to do a film that goes both ways. True. that has great shots and the audience resonates with it because the moment you touch your audience, you speak to them, you've got them and you're not losing Yeah, them. but you just mentioned about uh, the, the audience. Yes. We have, we're having an issue as Ugandan filmmakers mm. or storytellers. Mm. Uh, it, 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 it's as if, it's as if people do not understand the language you're trying to communicate to them. Mm. I don't know why is it that most Ugandan films, even when they are good, mm. in the sense of good, mm. and they're, they're out there in the cinemas, mm. Ugandans never got there. Why? We have a dead cinema culture. That's, oh. that's for sure. So it's upon the producers to go to the audience. That is why I celebrate people who do cinema drive-ins and they visit the audience where they are, mm, yeah? Mm. Or they put their movies, and I know it's, uh, it's unconventional, but sending your, your film out there through libraries, through Yeah, but then, 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 then like, you, yeah, like you said, yeah. at, at some point, at the end of the day, how mm. does this filmmaker mm. benefit? Yeah. I'll get to that. Mm. But um, when, when you send your film out there, people watch it, you get feedback. You get to know if you're on yes. the right track of telling a story. Mm, Other mm. than when you send it to a film, to a, uh, to a festival, a, no, no, to, to a screening mm. at Akashia, yes, and then you get twenty people to sit in Change. a very big Talk about that cinema and they watch your movie. It doesn't really. It's disappointing. I mean, when something like that happens, I always think mm. that maybe we haven't and took, taken time to understand our audience. Yes, absolutely. Maybe because sometimes what we write about, mm. they don't. They don't relate. They no. Don't. Ugandans are just lazy to go to cinema. Now imagine, <laughs> we only go when we we, we want to support the person that is But with all honest, there. I also go when it's, it's you know, it's like if I have to do like a, a red carpet yes, interviews, yes. Or if, I, if I'm part of the film, <laughs> exactly. or if it's Sissy, it's, yes. this is my girl, and yes. some of you have to yeah. support you. That know? is the only way you go. But there could be another film that is beautiful, but because you don't have that culture yes. of going, then you will never know if it's really good. So we have a very dead cinema culture and it's continuing to die with the introduction of video on demand, watching online, YouTube and all that. People want to watch from the comfort of their scenes. They don't want to go shopping a ball gown mm. to mm. go for a one hour movie and spend extremely expensively on it, you get. So we've got to research in our audience and also because now we are competing with other uh, with, with filmmakers out there mm. Mm. who are making it easy for their content to be accessed. We, we have, you know, to up up our game if we want to speak to the audience, if we want to reach out to them. But Ugandans, they still don't understand our stories, yes? Maybe it's because they never believed in us in the first place. Do you think so? We've been telling awful stories, I gotta say. No, recently I realized, like, so many stories on the market, Ziba Desert Dogo. <laughs> I don't know if you've met the Akatete Twatch. Muna, we touch Copa Nigeria. But I bought Shiva Koda. Buy upgrading. Yes, uh, watching the movies that were submitted submitted from Nigeria to the African Magic Viewers Choice Awards, mm. they had nothing to do with Dogo. Choka chefe. Ah, I forgot to tell. I talk man to the to the serious with this thing. To to our Copa, to our Copa Nigeria, like the way they do it, because, <laughs> it, do it, because <laughs> definitely it is not the same. Never see go. I will wear with you. I don't know how Balogo here behaves. Na eche mani. <laughs> even the way okay for example forget about even the dogo bit of mm. it when we are we are trying to tell stories about kingdoms yes. or uh, those village mm. village things mm. like how watch to ambaranga mm. nigeria yes. remember is that how they used to dress it's up? a sort of colonialism in a way and it's coming from <laughs> exactly a fellow african kati as an industry how mm. would you advise that we we, uh, we how how do we up our game we need to up our game but mm. how tell it's simple, tell your own story. Nobody will tell your story 
like better you than you would. Or yeah. Or like you would, yeah. I usually tell uh, what I call underdog stories mm. because I'm an underdog. I've been through hell and back. You get. Okay. So I re resonate with those stories more. And I know a million others out there resonate with their stories. You don't have to tell a story that millions will love. Just tell a story that one million will love. And that can make you rich. Mm. You, you get it can bring you a hundred million and that's a good start yes so tell that story that resonates with you stop telling other people's stories because they know and they experienced it so they have first-hand information but you don't let us stop copying honestly it ah, okay. me let me I'm, 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 I'm sorry I'm cutting you short but mm. how about this business this thing of people coming from wherever they're coming from to tell our stories because we are not telling them, can we blame but them? But they don't tell them the way we would love them to be told. Then let us tell them the way they would. We should be, tell them, and they will. They will. They will not. They will start to commission us to tell these stories because they know we have an upper hand. Make mm. to the stories. Then Nunji, we have kingdom stories. We have. We have, we have folk so stories. Much. We have e everyday stories that nobody has seen on screen. But we go on to tell alien stories. We go on to tell maybe Menke stories. Yeah, because we think we think mm. we malo kulaba et Nigeria cho ingrije chibatiba chaga demo. So I want to get a bit of that yes. and and get a bit of this and yes. then put it together. Mbuzi mbuzi as if it is actually Uganda na yenga. It's good to copy. Or, yeah, it, or to it, pick it, a it, leaf. It, yeah, it is really. But as long as you don't just manufacture what you got and <laughs> copy and paste. Yes, I yes, know. Yes, so true. guys, the yeah. entire nesisi but we're almost coming to the end of the show. Mm. All I want you to tell me is uh, I don't know you you mentioned earlier because as, as an actress or as an actor mm -hmm. there are people that I look at and I'm like Vanang, I mm -hmm. wish I wish I can get to meet this person I wish I can get to be with this person in the same in the same movie mm -hmm. and we are acting as co-actors mm -hmm. or even if it's just actually being doing the lead and I'm just an extra mm -hmm. environment I don't know you said at some point when you're young when you're growing up you used mm -hmm. to run away from <laughs> You had to talk about it. I know, <laughs> I know. You used to, I saw it somewhere and I was like, okay, mm. over observer. Mm. And I was like, eh. Because mm. <laughs> I had that habit also and I, I, I loved it mm. so much that mm. I, I, am, I tend to be alone in a way. Now yeah, I can watch movies. Mm. I can even, like there was time when I, I, I didn't have a DVD player or we didn't have these TVs mm. and, you know, so I would just like also go to those vendors and sit somewhere in the corner. Mm -hmm. But like you said, mm -hmm. so uh, how how did you like how did this help or how did you uh, convince your parents? Because clearly you're not you're not studying film at that point and you're running away. And how did they how did you take time to convince them to understand that this can actually put food on the table? Ah, uh, so by the time I used to run off to vendors, they didn't know. But I made my mom's business fail in the process. <laughs> How? <laughs> you know, she, she had started a shop, yeah. a merchandise shop. Yeah, and, and she would leave me in the oh. holidays and ha. go manage her business. And mm, then the mm, moment mm. she leaves, I would close, pick out a few coins to pay with, yeah. and then spend the entire day watching movies, and then wait for that moment when she's about to come back. And then and you then come back I and open. open. And I'll be like, there are no customers. I I, oh, yeah, I, I made her business. I will pay. Yeah. <laughs> I yes, will she will pay. <laughs> I will compensate in a way, God, God mm. willing. Mm. Uh, but um, I feel like that is what made me what I am today. If, if I didn't go, mm. I wouldn't be here. Maybe I would be, a, my mom always wanted me to be a doctor. I maybe would have been a doctor. And then when I graduated, they had a very big fight at my graduation mm -hmm. where my mom had deals, uh, plans, that I, I, I go off to the army. Hey. Yes, okay. because by then she knew mm. the whatever Minister of Defense. Mm. So she was like, it's, it's going to be easy slotting you in and you'll get bodyguards. I know. <laughs> and you'll get nyota yeah. out of yes. the blues. So I told her, look at me skinny as I am. One punch. I know you. And I'm dead. I tell you, no, I tell you, don't get to you, Mam Nango, in our bodyguard. <laughs> So I never had passion for any of those, okay. and that is where the challenge came from, like convincing her that I could earn a, a living from mm. film in, at a time when there was no money at all and the people that I was working with were mm. not paying. She I got know. so frustrated with me begging for money every now and then, and she's like, what's this you graduated with a degree? There are jobs out there. Why, don't Why you are do you in yeah. film? Do, why are you frustrating me even after school? And I understood her pain, but there was nothing that would satisfy me 
like the way I was, I felt when I did movies, when, mm. I, was, when I was writing, when I used to close myself in the house and write TV drama and I didn't want anyone to disturb me. You know, that sort of thing. It's like an icky guy. You, I, I knew I would get to that space where I get paid for my craft, but it wasn't there. So my mom got so frustrated with me. But I prayed, honestly. I, and I know people don't want to hear when mm. you front God so much yes, and like yeah, stop I preaching know. to us. But it had everything to do with God and opening doors that I could not open myself. True. I find myself getting contracts and people reaching out for co-productions when I have not even lifted a limb. Wow, you get, that's so nice. Yeah, so that's got to be with God doing something. So I believe every single person, even if I had taken on a job somewhere else, if God wasn't part mm. of it, I was definitely going to fail. So you just got to trust God and know that if he's... What does the Bible say? <laughs> he leads us in the path of righteousness yes, for his true, name's true. sake. So if he will take your steps and your feet in mm. the direction where he wants mm. you to go mm. and you will prosper there. So that I feel satisfied with what I'm doing right That's now. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so uh, mm. guys, we are like, like I said, mm. I am going to ask you now. Yes. For example, I mentioned that the ones that I love, oh, I wish I can meet this person. Just meet them mm. and uh, just say hello, hi. Mm. So who are those people that you really, really... I don't know as a writer if you have people that... Mm. I would like this person. I'd like to write a story mm. for Agi, for example. Mm. Uh, do you have those people? Absolutely. Uh, mm. Charlize Theron has been my girl. For, ah. She inspires me a lot. Hi. Nice. Yeah, but uh, I've always wanted to work with Tika Sumpta. Mm. Haves and haves it, is, it, is, it is a way like that woman as well. And she's my executive producer on Kela. So... So, <laughs> so imagine the irony of it. Um, so, no, what? Yes. Tika is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no wonder. But I'm glad yeah. I'm rubbing shoulders with you. Yeah. So, so I, I got so many executive producers on Keller. I fell in love with that when I was when I was watching her mm. haves and have nots. She was crazy but lovable in yeah. a way, as yeah, in, yeah, you know. Yeah. Someone, I, yeah. That's exactly what I was saying about about mm. uh, Taraj, what she was mm. saying, as in someone who's doing something wrong, mm. but somehow you're like, you, you love you her. love them. Mm. Yeah. 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 So Tika is one of them. And I, I believe in the future, God willing, and it, I don't know how easy or hard it's going to be, but I want to direct her in one of my films. So having her as a contact right now is very, very important. And I have other executive producers that I've worked with. There is an amazing lady that is my executive producer. Her name is Lolia Etomi. She's in Hollywood. She used to work with, um, with uh, Will Smith. She, she's, mm. she's mm. there. So she's been helping me a lot, apparently, with pushing the film to the festivals, giving me feedback and all. She's really gone way and above for Kela. So having such people, and I told her I'm going to cast you. <laughs> I'm going to cast you in a film that I'm going to do. And she was like, oh, yes, I would love to, to, oh, to be directed by you. But nice. I know she's just being kind and yeah. sweet. But there, I've seen, and I'm going, I'm going to be honest, at a certain point I imagine and envision things, and at a certain point I see them come to pass. That's nice. So don't be surprised when five years down the road you see Tika on my set. <laughs> see the excitement already <laughs> yes no i started a company it's mm. uh, i have a production company called jungle range production and um what i want to do is bring as much energy from out of the country into the country because i seeing I, I was on cox studio mm. uh, 2018 2019 and i saw how all the deals cross over to nairobi and nigeria yes and yet we have and I would like to take the pride. We have good talent here too. Someone told me that actually if you sit down and, and, and look at all these things, Ugandans, because yes. we speak better yes. English than Tanzanians yeah. and what, and mm -hmm. so we stand a better chance. We also have good talent altogether. Oh. Yes, we do. Uh, they have their strengths and we have ours. I've noticed the mm. differences. But I, I, I felt like even when you look at East Africa, good talent, they had to stage it in Kenya only to be won by Ugandans, you get. So such things make me want to drive all that energy to the place where it belongs. Having mm. so many productions cross over to Uganda, we still have issues with our, with our government policies and the frameworks in production, but I know we are getting there slowly by slowly. So by the time all this is in abundance, I want to drive in as much energy of co-productions coming on ground so that we employ more people home. 
that's nice. Yeah, because uh, now look at the film industry. How many people can it employ at the end of the day? Writers, production designers, editors, VFX, FX, directors, producers. So pro many. So, so many. Much. It's so much only if we invest in it, you know, and then we bring all this energy. So many people can be employed and earning from film, you know, so I feel like I need to do something towards that. That's nice. Yeah. That's so. right. I know I already told you to, to, to talk to someone or like, uh, and you mentioned that they should go either to school mm -hmm. or go to school or Google or something mm -hmm. like this, how you put it. Mm -hmm. But now there's someone out there and they need your advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you're advising your younger self. Yes. I want you to look into that lens and advise mm -hmm. this person. Okay, she's a girl, she's been uh, abused mm -hmm. and used mm -hmm. and she feels like it's not working and mm -hmm. maybe she's she feels like God. I, I asked you, there's, there are times when I sit down I'm like, God, I asked you if this mm -hmm. is my way, if this mm -hmm. is what I should go with. Make, 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 make me believe that you're in this thing. Mm -hmm. So there's someone out there, I mm -hmm been to auditions, been to that, mm -hmm. things are not adding up, things are not coming through. Mm -hmm. And if they come through, Ziriko, Ziriko strings, they, they, they are attached. Either you, you have to do this before mm -hmm. you do that, you mm -hmm. have to go here before you do here. So I would like you to look into that lens, talk to that young girl mm -hmm. who is out there, young boy, because it goes both ways. They, they're in there, they're out there, they, they, they love to do this, but they don't know what to go, what to start with, where mm. to go, who to talk to. Mm. But maybe, like I mentioned also, that they've been abused mm. and used and, mm. and, and, and you know, exploited mm. in a way, sexually or whatever way. So I'd like you to just look into that lens and mm. please advise your younger self. <laughs> My younger self? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought I was younger still. Um, okay. It's okay. It's the, okay. Other, the other one. <laughs> Okay, so maybe uh, what I could tell my younger self out there, the younger self in you, is your journey, your experience is your strength. So you got to tap into that. If, for instance, and I'm going to the worst case scenario, if I was raped, I would tell a story of rape with so much sentiment and it would touch millions of people. So use whatever experience you have had to tell a better story. I know it's frustrating to even talk about it, but when you get to that space, make that your niche, make that your strength and tell a story. If you don't know how many people would get touched by that and then change their lives. All I want is for people to tell stories that influence our generation, that speak to our generation, that touch and motivate Stop telling stories that don't really matter to you because you might find they don't matter to anyone if they don't matter to you, the one who is telling the story. And then in case of where to go, who to reach out to, I've known myself to be an aggressive go-getter. So I want you to do the same. The world will not come to you if you don't go to it. So try to reach out to as many people as you can. Reach out to me and if I say no, you will compliment yourself for trying, yeah? You'll be like, I did my part. Reach out to as many filmmakers that inspire you as possible. I want to reach out to people out there in Hollywood or in other parts of the world, you know, because I know that there's power in asking, you know, somebody can say no, but you did something about it. So please reach out to many people. Ask to be mentored, ask for internship, Ask for them to give you a chance to express yourself and you don't know that could count for something, yeah? And then pray. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.11 that everything is beautiful in God's timing. You might be struggling right now, but when it's not your time. Guys, let's believe in timing. You might want to tell this story now, but when it could make a groundbreaking letter in life. So if you get a no, don't feel bad. I have learned to, ident uh, to separate myself from my, my ideas. So somebody could come and kill my idea, but I would stay sane and I would still stay okay. So do the same. If you get a no from someone, if somebody banters your idea and they make you feel like you didn't do a good job, try again, learn, don't, don't develop pride. And anger issues, manage your anger. This is a very frustrating industry and you've got to be passionate to stay in it. You've got to be crazy. If you're not crazy enough, you can't be a filmmaker, yeah? So basically that is my advice to you. Reach out, make as many connections as you can, engage in workshops, engage in platforms, go to screenwriting forums and see what do they do. Go to other filmmakers' platforms and engage.
Yeah. Wow, I cannot add on that. I cannot add in any way. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank welcome. you so much. I, I, I don't know. I wish I can have you longer and longer. Because <laughs> you. you're so knowledgeable and informed. But that's what this show is about anyway. We talk, we tell, we, we teach, we inform, we educate you guys. Keep it rest TV. Keep it movie manual. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial because we have so many other shows that come before and after this. <laughs>